In my experience, the best way to learn to use chromatic passing notes in your solos is using Barry Harris' chromatic scale. But you have to watch out that you get it to where it becomes really amazing, because there's a lot more in there that goes far beyond chromatic notes and deep into some amazing bebop phrasing. And you don't want to miss that. What makes this a beautiful strategy is probably that it's actually incredibly simple, but also very complete. Let me show you what I mean. If you take a C major scale, the goal is to add a chromatic note between all the notes in the scale, and for the most part, that is super easy, barely an inconvenience, but there are a few trouble spots. So if I go up the scale, from C to D, there's a half step, so you just add the C sharp. Same between D and E, you just add the D sharp. Now between E and F, there's no chromatic leading note here, so you take the scale note that's above the F, in this case that's a G, and then you get from F to G, it's the half step, the same from G to A, and from A to B. And then again, between B and C, you take the scale note above the C, so you get... And you can do exactly the same going down, adding a scale note whenever there isn't a natural chromatic leading note between two notes. That will give you this. There are a lot more to get from this, especially with those exception spots. You should also realize that this system actually will work with any scale, so if you take a harmonic minor that will give you this sound. But what is so great about a bunch of chromatic notes? The first advantage is having a way to insert chromatic notes before every note in a scale. That's actually incredibly powerful because that means that you can come up with a short lick and then move it around in the scale and it will work for a lot of chords. Check out this line with two half steps and an arpeggio. And with Barry's chromatic scale, it's actually easy to move this line around to other chords and still keep the rhythm the same. This is a pretty simple line, so I'm just starting on the third of the chord, E, and then moving down to the root, but adding half steps. So in this case, that's... And then I run up the arpeggio. Then you can move that to D minor seven like this, starting on the third, that's F. I need to take a scale note above, so... Because I'm moving from F to E, and then I can just add a half step in between, so and up the arpeggio and take it one further to E minor 7. Of course you should take this through the entire scale, but you can also hear how these all work. And notice that the E minor 7 line really sounds great over a C major 7 as well, so you're developing solid material for several chords working like this. The important thing here is that Barry's chromatic scale keeps the rhythm intact when you move around the phrases, because that means that it stays solid vocabulary. But this is just the basic system, and I see quite a few students get stuck with just using only a small part of what is there, which is actually a pity, since it can create so many other beautiful things even chords. Until now the phrases have been pretty simple, but they really work and they're easy to create. And often I find that the emphasis is on using Barry's chromatic scale to create lines where chord tones are on the downbeat and chromatic notes or half steps are on the offbeat. In fact, similar to the thinking in bebop scales. You probably know that I'm not a huge fan of bebop scales. This example isn't wrong, but you don't want to stop here. If you listen to bebop lines, then they are not only changing direction on the heavy beat like this one does. A typical bebop line like this Parker lick changes direction in less predictable places, and that's a huge part of why it sounds good. It's much more surprising and exciting. <laughs> There are different ways to describe what is going on in a lick like this, but this exercise actually can help you get more of that sound into your playing. And on a side note, you also want to notice that Parker doesn't mind having a leading note on the downbeat at the beginning of the phrase. That is not a rule. And whenever I say that, then there are people in the comments who start complaining that I say that it is a rule, which is really weird. I guess it'll be interesting to see if they already stopped the video and are typing angrily without watching the next 10 seconds. The secret weapon that you have for making stronger melodies are primarily the exceptions in the exercise, which are an incredible tool and much more powerful than you might think. You might wonder why is this useful, but it's actually difficult to get the melodies to have a natural flow and still move around in a surprising way without sounding like a scientific experiment. And in the Barry Harris chromatic scale, that's already there and you can get the melody to skip around without having to do any extra work. Take this super simple melody. You can add a half step between the B and the A. 
but if you add the half step between the C and the B, then you need to skip up to that higher scale note and you get a much nicer melody. And of course, you can use this together with other half steps and get. And there's a lot more available. I'll get to the crazy chords later, but let's first just create some really great bebop lines. Whenever Barry talks about this exercise in the master classes, he also talks about how any note can be a half step. And I want to show you how you can use this as a method for creating some really solid bob lines. And it's easy to get to work, but also has sort of a, an odd side effect. If you start working with a basic descending line, then the version that you already know sounds great and is this. But you can also turn it into an amazing melody with a large six interval by using the third as a half step. So skipping down to a lower E. And you can of course also just choose to add a leading note below the target. Now while I don't think that chromatic lead notes have to be on an offbeat, then 99% of the time these types of lines sound a lot better if the half step is not on the downbeat. But you can actually work around that by adding a leading note to the low leading note. And working on this, coming up with licks where you insert these melodic skips into your solos will really make your lines go up a few levels on the scale of bebop goodness. These first examples were all based around the exception spots in the lines, but maybe it also works in other places. If you start with this, and usually you would just add a half step between the E and D because that's super easy, barely an inconvenience. But here, skipping down to a lower chord tone, like the fifth, the G, also sounds great. And adding a leading note to the leading note, because that's how we work, and also a few other half steps, will give you a great line like this one. And this is a line that you can again move around in the scale and turn into a D minor seven, G seven lick and create this two, five, one. I will go over some more examples of how I write lines using Barry's chromatic scale in this week's Patreon video, but maybe that's actually also just a topic to cover in another video. Let me know about that in the comments. Now let's look at that crazy chord exercise. So one thing that I remember from the first year I went to the piano classes in The Hague was how Barry talked about harmonizing this chromatic scale. He had gotten that idea from one of the piano players in The Hague, Eric Duhlmann, who sadly passed away a few years ago. At the time, I took this exercise and tried to move it to guitar with drop two voicings, and it was pretty much unplayable. But again, the idea is actually pretty simple, and you can sometimes find some really nice things in there with some very dissonant, very strange chords. Essentially, you take a chord voicing and then just move each note through Barry's chromatic scale. For a C major seven, that looks and sounds like this. I suspect that I did the same thing, but started with a C6 voicing, which actually makes it a lot more difficult to play. And this is a great exercise for your fretboard overview, exploring this exercise. And you can also just find some pretty crazy chord sounds in there that you can throw in here and there as some interesting passing chords. Another place where you can use this and actually just a great place to develop your skills with chords is to work on making your own chord melody arrangements. And if you want to know my method for this, and the story of my first ever chord melody arrangement on a jazz song that I don't even really like, then check out this video. 